Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky, if you're new, we just did an entire tour of my dry good pantry, my candy pantry, my bulk items, and the fresh things that I have still on the homestead that are fresh, other than I guess what we're gonna tour today. That is only kind of part of my pantry. My other pantry are my two deep freezers that I have downstairs, plus I have a freezer up in my garage. If you are new, welcome. I have a homestead where I've got a pretty large garden. I have 16 raised beds that are 20 feet by four feet. Plus I have chickens and they lay eggs, but that's the only protein we produce on the homestead and we have no plans to get into any other type of livestock. And so what I like to do is partner with local farmers and purchase from local farmers, my pork and beef and chicken when possible. And so I'm gonna show you what I have in my freezers. Plus I am learning to preserve things in a few different ways this year. And I've actually been relying on my freezers for some of the things coming out of my garden and my refrigerator. I've got, I don't have a cold room. I mean, I've got this basement, but it's not a root cellar. It's not a cold room. And so I have a refrigerator upstairs that I'm using as a cold room. And we are going to tour that refrigerator together so I can show you what I'm keeping fresh from the garden. For context, it is now late November and I still have fresh produce in my refrigerator and I will for the next few months because I'm using it like a root cellar. Now I'm gonna show you these two deep freezers and a freezer upstairs. It took me, Josh and I have been married, it'll be almost 10 years, and it took us that entire time to work up to three freezers. We started out with one when I wanted to buy my beef from a local farmer. That was the first thing I ever purchased from a local farmer. And then I wanted to buy a hog from a local farmer. And that takes up space, <laughs> it takes up freezer space. So I'm gonna show you what I have now, the last time, we'll start with this freezer. So I'm gonna shut this. The last time I purchased a whole, a half a cow was August of 2022. And so I'm gonna show you what I still have from that half a cow over a year later. This basket is empty because this is where I had things like New York steaks and the fancier cuts of steaks that you think of when you think of steaks. And that's now been eaten through. But over here, we still have some steaks, and these are steaks that I will throw on the grill. I'll marinate them. You ha I have some skirt steaks, and I have one flank steak. You only get one flank steak when you order a half a, ho a cow. And then what is this? I don't even, oh, um, carnitas, and I have a beef tongue. So sometime this winter, I will thaw these out, marinate them, and cook them on the grill for probably a Taco Tuesday. Now the beef tongue is something I have never cooked before. You all have given me a ton of recipes that I need to try to make it. I am a little bit nervous about making it. I have read that it tastes absolutely delicious. It's just a mental block for me. So this winter, I need to tackle that. So that's gonna be on the list of things to do. In these two bags, I have a ton of chuck roasts. We don't go through a ton of chuck roasts in the winter, or excuse me, in the summer. So this winter, I will be going through quite a few of those. And then in here, we have the brisket. So probably this winter, when we have a party at my mom's house, I will bring this over and we will have that as a family meal at some point. I'll have my mom put it on her smoker. And then here, we've got some soup bones. And then this is a tenderloin from the half a beef. One thing I love about when you order a half a cow is you pay the same price for ground beef as you do for the entire tenderloin roast. At Costco last time I looked at these for conventionally raised beef, it was about $150 for this roast and I paid about $5.25 a pound for this roast, so I paid a fraction of that price. I think it was around like $36 a pound or something like that. And this is grass-fed, grass-finished beef. Now you only get one of them when you order a half a cow. And I'm gonna make this, I think, for my dad's birthday. I think I want to make him a beef, what is it called? What a, beef Wellington. I think I wanna make a Beef Wellington. I've done that one other time, turned out absolutely delicious and it was a lot easier than I expected. So I think that's what I'm gonna do with this. And then I still have quite a bit of ground beef left. 
This box was full all the way to the top with ground beef. These are one pound packages. Plus when I ordered, I still had some ground beef from the previous half a cow I ordered. So we still have half this box. So I probably won't need to order beef until next August. So a half a beef lasts us two years. This right here is tallow. This is the fat that is around the animal's kidneys. It is the cleanest fat on the animal and I need to render that, This that needs to be a winter project where I render that and turn that into tallow. You can use it for beauty products, you can use it for cooking. McDonald's french fries used to all be cooked in beef tallow until they wanted to make them vegetarian friendly and now they cook them in seed oil, I don't know which kind, and they put tallow flavoring in it because they still want it to taste like tallow but they don't want it to be in tallow and so they use artificial flavoring. So beef tallow, especially if you use the leaf lard, it has a very delicious flavor and it's not super strong, but it adds good flavor, especially if you're roasting potatoes or anything like that, it just adds a really yummy flavor. And then in here I have a few pork products. Most of my pork is in my other freezer, but I have two of these ham hocks for making with beans. And then we've got some tenderloins. This is the leaf lard from uh, pork that I need to render as well. I've got more of that. I've got a lot of rendering I need to do. And then this is a, oh, that's, that's the heart. So I need to freeze dry this for dog treats. My dogs absolutely love freeze dried heart and liver and things like that. So when you order a whole hog or half a beef, you have the option of getting things that you wouldn't normally get if you buy things. Well, I guess you could get them at the grocery store, but then you'd have to buy them. And I like to get the organ meat and Josh and I don't really enjoy eating it, but what we do enjoy is being able to freeze dry it and giving it to my dogs and my dogs go crazy for it. The butcher that I go to does not make beef patties and so I do like to pick up some grass fed grass finished beef patties. So that's what those are just for easy throwing on the grill so that I don't have to make my own. Sometimes I make my own patties but sometimes I don't want to. So that's that freezer and then this is this freezer. It's not super full except for <laughs> that is a ton of ta uh, lard that I need to render. I like to keep my whole wheat flour in the freezer just so it stays fresh longer. Over here is where I've got bacon. I just ordered a, half, a whole hog and so I've got a lot of bacon and then I've got some sausage. I have Italian sausage and breakfast sausage and some bratwurst. When I order my half a hog and whole hogs now, I only have them made into bacon and sausage because that's what we eat the most of. I don't do, well, next time I think I'm gonna have them keep the loin whole because I like to do a stuffed loin but I've just found that this is the way we prefer it to be processed because this is the way we eat it so that's the way I have it processed. The last hog that I ordered was a Cooney Cooney. It's the variety or the breed of pig and it is a lard pig hence why I have so much lard and it didn't have that much meat that came along with it and so even though I ordered this not that long ago we, we have a ton of bacon still but we don't have that much pork or sausage, and so at some point here coming up, I'm gonna have to order another one just so I can fill up my sausage. But for now, that is a good amount for us. These two containers are chicken. I've got chicken breasts over here, and then I have chicken thighs, and those are just from the grocery store. I got those on sale. And then here we have some salmon and some cod. This is, a whole, this is where I have whole chickens. I've got a chicken that I found on sale at the store. Plus this box is actually pasture raised chickens that I got from a local farm. And then there I've got two pork butts. Here I've got some nuts and chocolate chips and then strawberries. I like to use these black totes in my deep freezer as a way to organize them. And right now I don't have a ton of things in here. And when I do have more stuff, I can actually stack these totes on top of each other and then I can keep like things with like things and I can just pull out the whole tote using handles if I need to. That way I can keep everything a little bit more organized in my deep freezer. So that's these two deep freezers. Let's go upstairs and look at the freezer that I have upstairs. That's where I have things that I preserved from the garden. So this is my one stand up freezer and this is where I have mostly freezer meals and things we preserved from the garden. So let's go ahead and start up here. So here, this whole entire tote is all corn. I did 150 ears of corn this year. 
It is one of the favorite things we preserve. I've tried growing it every year. It's done absolutely terrible. And so I purchased it from a local organic farm because if I buy it in bulk, I can get a great price on it. So that's what this is. Here I have two freezer meals. I've got two meatballs with marinara sauce and two pasta bakes. These three boxes here are frozen fruit I purchased in bulk. I've got mangoes and strawberries. These are gonna be freeze dried. My freeze dryer is currently running. These are just gonna be for freeze dried snacks. I figured this is a great way, a time saver. I can buy them already pre-frozen and pre-diced and ready to go. And I can just freeze dry them because freeze dried fruit is one of our favorite snacks. This I'm gonna to gift to my mom. I'm gonna cook it down and I'll show you. We'll do it together. I also have some bread products in here that I purchased from Costco. We're gonna be making some make ahead Christmas casseroles. So I've got some, I needed, what are these called? These are croissants. I needed croissants and some kind of like rustic bread. I'm not gonna make those for a little bit. So when I was at Costco last, I went ahead and got those and then I just threw them in the freezer. I also pick it, picked up a thing of spinach. This is the pre-washed ready to go spinach. I did not grow any spinach in the garden this year and I like doing this because the leaves are individual as opposed to buying the blocks. I do that sometimes too, but there's something really nice about buying the spinach that's in these containers that's pre-washed, ready to go. And if I freeze it like this, I can just grab a handful of spinach and throw it in a pasta dish or a soup or whatever it might be or a smoothie and it's ready to go for me. Here I have some corn cobs because I want to make some corn cob jelly. So that's what that is. I've got three things of tortillas. Now I do need to mention, I don't have very many freezer meals. I just have these four plus a couple marinated meats at the bottom when we get to it. So I'm going to need to plan another day where we make a bunch of dinners. Now on this shelf, we have a ton of sliced onions and diced onions. This is only about half of what I have done. The other ones aren't in these bags, they're in just a Ziploc bag in my inside freezer. And I put these ones in the vacuum seal bags for in here, cause these are gonna be for later in the year. So I figured they should be vacuum sealed versus just in a Ziploc bag. We've got butter. So I've got some butter back there as well. I buy butter in bulk and then I just freeze it. So I have it on hand whenever I need it. Here is pizza sauce. This is one of my absolute new favorite things how I did this pizza sauce this year. So delicious, I will link a video on that. We have, same with this. I've got frozen peach salsa and tomato salsa from the garden and phenomenal, love it, absolutely delicious. Down here, I have some elderberry. One of my neighbors happens to have an elderberry tree and they didn't know it. And they let me pick some elderberries so I get to do something with that. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that yet, but. I think I'm gonna make elderberry tincture. And then here we've got frozen hash browns in this tote. This tote is gnocchis, homemade gnocchis. I can link a video on this as well. And these are great for a fast, easy dinner. Here I have three apple pie fillings. I absolutely love making apple pie filling and freezing it because then I can turn it into apple pie, apple crisp, hand pies, whatever I want to turn it into. Down here, I have some pumpkin puree. I have about four pumpkins I still need to roast up and turn into puree. We use that in savory and sweet applications. This is just frozen sliced apples. I could freeze dry that or we could turn it into something, put it in baked goods. I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do with it. I have half plums. These are from the orchard. Both the apples and the plums are from the orchard. And then here I've got some peppers. These are sugar rush peach peppers. These are one of our favorite peppers. I have some cherry tomatoes for making quick pasta dishes. This right here is a new thing to me this year. This is homemade tomato paste and they're frozen in little pots. So I can just throw one of these in a dish. My freezer alarm is beeping at me telling me I need to close the door. So I'm gonna close it for a second and then we can continue on with the tour. Alrighty, it has been closed long enough. So I do have a marinated chicken recipe here. I have Italian meatballs here. These are just some homemade meatballs. And then I have some homemade, those are an Asian style hamburger patty. And then in the door, I've got quite a few things as well. 
When I buy milk, we can't go through it fast enough when I get it at Costco, so I like to freeze it. I have a homemade bunt cake that is a pumpkin bunt. I made it because I thought I needed it for a family thing. Didn't end up needing it, so I'll probably pull that out next family event. Cake freezes beautifully, but it does look like it needs to be used up at the next family event. Over here we have, this is garlic butter. So homemade, or not homemade butter, it's butter I got from the store, but it's homegrown garlic that I pureed up and I added it to butter. I just cut a chunk off and I use it to saute onions and peppers and it's the beginning of a dish for the, you know, the butter and the garlic, or I use it to make garlic bread. And then this is, this is one of my new favorite things. This is, it doesn't look like much, but, it's caramelized onions that are frozen. So, so delicious. Up here, this is just classic frozen zucchini, some frozen cherry tomatoes, a bunch of frozen peppers from the garden. Oh, these are green beans. This is peppers. No, that's not peppers, that's snow peas, green beans. I used to only freeze my green beans, but I decided to pressure can them this year and we really, really enjoyed that. So I might not freeze as many green beans next year. We'll just have to see what I decide to do next growing season. This whole section is diced peppers. I do have some more diced peppers in my inside freezer, but I think I only have one or two packages. So this year I got one, two, three, four, five, six plus seven, eight, plus all the peppers we've eaten, packages worth of peppers. I think that's the best pepper year I have ever had. More shredded zucchini more corn. I did put on these packages how many cups of corn are in each one of these containers so that I know. Some of them have one cup, some have two cups, some have three cups, and some have four cups. And then this is some cookie dough that I have frozen. I like to make homemade cookie dough and put that in the freezer. Here is a bunch of shredded carrots and frozen diced carrots. This freezer wants me to shut it again, but that is what this freezer looks like. So a lot of the homegrown goodies are in this freezer. And then we also have some fresh garden produce. So for context, it is the end of November right now. And we've been eating out of this freezer already. We've been eating a lot of corn, carrots. I've actually been not eating too many of the frozen carrots yet because we've been trying to, I'll show you next. We still have a ton of fresh carrots. So I'm trying to go through the fresh ones before I start diving into the frozen ones. We've already eaten all the celery that I froze. And I don't think we've eaten through everything, but the peppers will probably be the next to go because I don't have any fresh peppers. So now I'm gonna show you this refrigerator where we still have some fresh produce in this refrigerator from the garden. This refrigerator was my 30th birthday gift from Josh. And you know you're an adult when you ask for a refrigerator for your 30th birthday. So we can start down here. First off, you're gonna notice a whole bunch of carrots. We, I think I've gone through, I got, well, I grew 40, no, 77 pounds of carrots or something like that. I've gifted quite a few bags. We have already eaten, I think, four bags. We've been eating a lot of carrots because that's what I have fresh right now. And these varieties of carrots are a storage variety. I grew Bolero carrots and I grew Royal Chantney carrots. I also have cabbages. I harvested about eight of these when I did the garden clean out and we've been eating these a lot. We've been having a lot of egg roll in a bowl because I've got carrots, homegrown onions and homegrown cabbage. Normally I make egg roll in a bowl with green cabbage, but we have red, so I've been making it with red. I've also been roasting a lot of carrots with my Korean red pepper flakes, and oh my goodness, are they so good. They are almost like candy. And we also have still some homegrown apples for fresh eating. And this drawer was full of apples too, but it's now full of carrots, and it was full of pears. We've already gone through the pears and this thing of apples, plus some lemons. Now these are from the store. I have some celery and Brussels sprouts. These are homegrown. This right here, I will have to show you how I made this. My One of my favorite things I made, and I, we've gone through like six jars of it, are these pickled carrots. Oh my goodness, when we have like Taco Tuesday or burrito bowls or whatever, those I almost eat like chips. They are so delicious. And so one night I was making some Asian food 
And I thought, oh my goodness, wouldn't this be good with onions and ginger and pepper flakes and rice wine vinegar and more of an Asian flair. This is more of a Hispanic flair. It's got jalapenos and some different, you know, like Mexican style flavors versus this one is more of an Asian style. And these are so phenomenal. I just made a little jar and I need to make probably about six more jars of those and a few more jars of these. We have some refrigerator pickles up here. I've got some sour cream. I just placed my Azure order. So we've got a lot of sour cream right now, some adult beverages, some mixers, some carbonated water. And then over here is where you will really see that I just picked up an Azure order. This is mozzarella cheese. This is just some cream cheese from Costco. This is all cheddar cheese. They had a sale on this brand. I've never, I haven't even opened one of these yet, so I don't know if they're good or not, but they had a sale and it was A2 raw sharp cheddar cheese. So I went ahead and got this instead of what I normally get because it was a sale price. And I'm kind of excited about this because they are in individual wrappers instead of, you know, dealing with what I normally get is a whole five pound block. This might be actually what I go with moving forward, but time will tell if I like this better or if I like the big block better. I also have some provolone cheese back there. I've got some Borison cheese. I have some pasta recipes I wanna try with this, plus it's just absolutely delicious. Eggnog for some cookies. I wanna make some eggnog flavored cookies this Christmas. And then we've got heavy cream, Parmesan cheese, apple cider, Worcestershire sauce. So that is the refrigerator, mostly dairy and carrots. This refrigerator acts as my root cellar because I don't have a root cellar, I don't have a cold room, and so I store my things that need to stay cold in here. Now, I don't, you won't see a lot of fermented stuff. The only thing that we really enjoy that's fermented is kombucha and I keep my bottles of kombucha in my refrigerator because I don't make a ton of it. I only make about a gallon every two to three weeks. And so I just keep those bottles in my inside refrigerator. And Josh and I don't really enjoy, or I haven't found some really yummy fermented vegetables that we really like. We love, I love fermented hot sauce. And I have only a little bit of that and it's in my inside fridge. I didn't make a ton of fermented hot sauce this year. I made a ton of it last year and I just didn't get around to it this year. But if I had ferments, they would be in here too, like my fermented hot sauce. Or if I had a lot of kombucha, I'd probably put it in here, but I'd only have, I only make like a few bottles of it every few weeks. So we kind of go through that quickly. So I keep it in the inside fridge. So friends, thank you so much for hanging out with me as we toured my two freezers. We are good on beef. We are good on pork for a while. I will have to order one probably in the next few months just so that I have it in the queue. We've got still a ton of things the garden is giving us, even though garden season is over. I'm still harvesting cilantro out of the garden and lettuce and a bunch of herbs like thyme and rosemary and things like that and parsley are still coming out of the garden. But for the most part, garden season I'm considering done. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you missed part one of this tour where we toured the pantry of the dried good and canned good goods, I'm gonna link that video here for you. You can go enjoy that between now and my next upload. I'll pop another video down here. You can go enjoy if you wanna watch one before I upload next. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.